all newly renovated space uh, yeah, since the pandemic. Yeah. Changed yeah. my name. I'm not Italian <laughs> anymore. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Whitaker. I'm president and CEO of Humber College. It's my pleasure to welcome Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, Ross Romano, Minister of Colleges and Universities, Associate Minister King Asurma, and MPPs Christine Hogarth and Natalia Kusandova to Humber College's North Campus. Welcome to all those joining us virtually. I'd like to begin today's announcement by acknowledging the land on which Humber College campuses are located. Humber is located within the traditional and treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit, known as Adobagok, the place of the alders in Michi Sagi language. The region is uniquely situated along the Humber River watershed, which historically provided an integral connection for Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples between the Ontario Lakeshore and the Lake Simcoe Georgian Bay regions. Now home to people of numerous nations, Adobagok continues to provide a vital source of interconnection for all. In February 2020, Humber had the privilege of hosting the Premier, Minister Romano, and our local MPPs for an announcement about the province's new nursing education policy. That visit to our simulated patient care suites was one of the last events we had on campus. Just a few weeks later, we had to close the college due to the global pandemic. Over the summer and into the fall, we worked to safely reopen for the critical in-person education required for so many on the front lines in the fight against COVID-19, including those in health and long-term care. Today's announcement highlights the progress made with a new nursing education policy. The need for high quality nursing education has never been more apparent. Humber is a leader in degree education in the Ontario college sector. In fact, one quarter of all students enrolled in a degree program at an Ontario college study at Humber. As we will hear in a few moments, we are looking forward to adding to our degree program offerings and to continue preparing students for their future through our signature polytechnic mix of career focused theory and hands on learning. Before I turn it over to the Premier, I want to thank all the Humber faculty and staff who continue to support our students across our physical and digital campuses during these challenging times. Premier, over to you. Well, thank, thank you, Chris. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for that introduction, Chris. It's always great to be home right here in Etobicoke at Humber College. The folks who work here are my friends and neighbors. They're some of the uh, unsung heroes of the pandemic. They're working their backs off day in and day out to train the next generation of workers for the in-demand jobs, the jobs of the future. I'd also like to give a shout out to my all-star Minister of Universities and Colleges, Ross Romano. Also, I want to acknowledge Etobicoke Lakeshore MPP, Christine Hogarth, and Etobicoke Centre Minister Surma for joining us today, along with MPP Natalia Kusandova, also working at William Osler in her space, uh, spare time as a nurse, and, and Natalia, thank you. Natalia was probably putting in 100 hours a, a week there throughout this pandemic. They've all done an incredible job during this pandemic, helping to keep our post-secondary students safe from COVID-19. Friends, before we begin today, I wanna give a massive shout out to General Hillier, Minister Elliott, Solicitor General Jones, and Minister Thompson, and the countless officials who worked to launch our COVID-19 vaccine booking system. Yesterday, the first day, over 133,000 appointments were made. That's 133,000 appointments. That's nearly 185 appointments made every single minute. We knew there'd be bumps in the roads and a handful of people unfortunately received an error message. But as General Hillier said, we identified the issues fast and we fixed them even faster. And that's exactly what we did. And today, over 110,000 more appointments have been booked since this morning. If anyone experienced any issues yesterday, please log back on or call today to book your appointment. Now, turning back to today's announcement. Friends, 
There's no question our nurses are world class. In the last year since the COVID-19 pandemic began, nurses have shown how absolutely vital they are to our healthcare system, which is why we are here today to mark a major milestone, a standalone nursing degree at Humber College. The Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree will be one of the first offered by publicly assisted college in this province. I applaud the President and CEO of Humber, Chris Whitaker, for his leadership as Humber blazes a trail for the benefit of everyone in Ontario. Now, Ontario's nursing students will have more choice about where to get their nursing degrees starting this September. And they'll be able to do it right here at Humber College. So congratulations, Chris and Jason, wherever Jason is, you're an absolute champion. And he is a champion, Jason. And everyone here at Humber for this achievement. I couldn't be more pleased and prouder of what this program means to our hospitals, long-term care homes, public health units, and everyone in Ontario. This will change the face of health care in our province for years to come. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll hand it over to Minister Romano. I'm going to play this game again. I'm going to drink the one on the right, just to be clear. <clears throat> I'm going to tuck it to the side. I tend to go through a lot of water. Good afternoon, and thank you so much, Premier Ford, uh, for the introduction. Today is a historic day in Ontario. Since the collaborative model for nursing education was created in the year 2000, Ontario's publicly assisted colleges were only able to offer a nursing degree in partnership with a university. But if the past has taught us anything, it's that through innovation and flexibility, we can improve the way we educate and train our workforce. It was over a year ago the Premier and I were here at Humber College, and at that time, we spoke at length with President Whitaker and his whole team about Humber College's nursing program. He told us that all four years of the program was delivered and taught on Humber's campus. However, to formally give the degree to students, they had to pay a fee to the University in New Brunswick, and students would receive a degree from that university in New Brunswick. Humber was only one of many colleges across Ontario that offered parts of a nursing degree in collaboration with another university. We recognized the amazing work our universities do in training nurses and other professionals. However, we know that our colleges have been and remain able to deliver high quality nursing education and empowering them to do so will make it easier for prospective students to access training in their own communities. That's why last year I announced that we were moving forward with allowing colleges the power to grant nursing degrees. And we are so excited to be here today at Humber College again to announce that as of March 4th, 2021, Humber College has officially been designated by the government and the College of Nurses of Ontario to offer standalone nursing programs. I'd like to congratulate them on being one of the first Ontario colleges to offer a full four-year Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree independent of a university partner. This will be an exciting step and you, as you welcome the inaugural cohort of students this coming September. This is such incredible news and I really want to offer my thanks again and congratulations to President Whitaker. I want to say this as a conclusion. Last year when our government introduced this new pathway for nursing education, it was our goal to offer more choice for students. We wanted to make it easier for them to access a high quality education that was closer to their homes, that would prepare them for rewarding careers in nursing. These new exciting opportunities to receive a high quality education in nursing are providing more local based post secondary choices for future nurse students. This opportunity is a critical milestone in the delivery of nursing education in Ontario, which will support the next generation of qualified healthcare professionals in our province. Thank you so much, everyone. And I now turn it over to uh, MPP Hogarth. Thank you. He's turning over to me. I Anyways, now I see here. Jason. My apologies. And I see that, you know something, folks? I see the greatest counselor in the city of Toronto, Michael Ford. Good to see you. Champion. We'll go to the phone line for questions. First question, please. From Sean Jeffords at the Canadian Press. Hi, Sean. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Premier. Hi. I wanted to ask you about uh, a report 
that uh, we've seen this morning from the, uh, the Ontario Science Table, Advisory Table. They're saying that uh, based on uh, the rise of uh, variants across the province, that we are now in a third wave of COVID-19. Yes. Wanted to get your reaction to that, but also I wanted to ask you if uh, you think that in light of this finding that Ontario eased up on restrictions and lifted the stay-at-home order too soon. Well, again, uh, and good, good question, Sean. I, I heard the same uh, uh, thing from the, the science table, and I always respect what the science table says. Uh, I, I take, uh, you know, my, my information through Dr. Williams, chief medical officer, and we'll, we'll be sitting down talking to him. But again, the, the message to the people, you know, yes, we're seeing the vaccinations uh, roll out, but we can't let our guard down for a second. We have to make sure we social distance, constantly be wearing a mask, uh, follow the protocols of the chief medical officer. We can't let our guard down. So I'd be uh, very, very cautious uh, moving forward. Follow up. And, and Premier, I also wanted to ask you about uh, the NASI uh, uh, change in guidance when it comes to the AstraZeneca shot and how that might impact the vaccine rollout. They're now saying that uh, seniors um, 65 and older can get this shot. Uh, what's that going to mean for Ontario's vaccine rollout? And will it mean that 65 to 80 year olds can now get the shot um, yeah. in pharmacies and at doctor's offices? Sure, uh, Sean. So, you know, we're going to uh, fulfill the commitment with the people that have already uh, registered. But, you know, when we when we get a change of direction from the feds, which is NASI, and they're, they're changing and moving the goalpost, I, I can't begin to tell you how the logistics behind it. Um, it just messes everything up, to be very frank with you. It's good news that they can... Uh, you know, can go uh, older than 60, 65, but man, we, we have everything set up, we get everyone lined up, and all of a sudden, pff, without notice today, now we can move the goalpost again. So now we have to change everything. It's not, it's not easy, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that, and I give all the credit uh, to the folks out on the, on the front lines, trying to constantly be playing catch up on the, these goalposts that are, are, are being moved. But uh, we'll deal with it, we're gonna make sure we commit to finishing off uh, everyone from the 60, 65. We're hoping we're gonna get uh, more AstraZeneca. Again, I, I couldn't give you an exact date. I hear maybe next week or maybe not, uh, possibly in the middle of April, we're gonna get it. Like, how can you run a system when you don't know your supply's coming 100%? It, 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 I'll be very frank, you can hear a little frustration it's not my frustration, it's the frustration of people on the front line constantly trying to, you know, trying to move and, and read and react immediately. So uh, we'll, we'll get there. All I need is more vaccines from the feds. That, that's what it comes down to. Next question. From Laura Stone at the Global Mail. Please go ahead. Hi, Laura. Hi, Premier. Um, just on vaccines, so uh, the province's high priority list for healthcare workers um, includes massage therapists, naturopaths, and chiropractors. And we know that York Region is now moving to vaccinate these people at the same time as those who are 80 and over. So how does it make sense for the province to be not even finished those over 80 who are the most vulnerable and giving shots to these groups before those in their 60s and 70s? Yeah, good question, Laura. Our, our direction always, let's make it a priority. We have 34 public health units all kind of going at a different pace. Some are more efficient than others. But uh, I encourage every public health unit, let's make sure we get 80 plus over before we get to anyone else. And I'm sure if you went to a massage therapist and said, you know, do you have an elderly parent? Do you have grandparents? Are you gonna give up your shot for your elderly mother or father of 80? I would say 100% of the people, no matter who they are, would say yes. So folks, let, let's, let's just get the 80 year old plus done um, and then we'll move to the, the next stage. But, oh, I agree with you, Laura. You, you can't justify it. So let's, let's start moving. I'll, I'll talk to the public health officer uh, out in York and ask him what the rationale is. And by the way, he's a great public health officer out there. That guy's moving like lightning. Follow up. Right, except this is your, your own government's list. Like the, these workers, these high priority healthcare workers yep. are on your 
government vaccination list. Yeah. They're, they're supposed to be at the same time as the over 80. So are you going to uh, be changing this and move solely to age and the highest risk? I mean, he uh, says he's just following what the provincial guidance says. So are you going yeah. to be revisiting this? Well, you know something, and there's a lot of smart uh, public health officers out there, but you know, let's 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 just think this out for a minute. Who are you going to prioritize? And God bless the massage therapists. We need them, and they're, they're great folks. But prioritize 80 plus. Now let's let's make sure you know we take care of them. They're the most vulnerable. 70s the most vulnerable. So on and so forth. But uh, I'm encouraging every single public health unit take care of the most vulnerable, the PHUs, and then we'll get to the massage therapists and get uh, to everyone else. So that's that's my uh, my advice. Next question from Lorenda Redekop at CBC. Please go ahead. Hi, Lorenda. Hi, Premier. We're seeing a lot of info from family doctors saying they have no clue what the plan is for them in giving vaccines. That's of course apart from those you know, those few doctor's offices that are involved already in the AstraZeneca pilot. And as you can imagine, patients, they're also wondering, so what can you say to doctors and to patients? Well, what I understand through General Hillier and, and through the, the Minister uh, uh, Jones and, and, and uh, Minister Elliott, they've been communicated to through the OMA. Uh, I know, I know uh, General Hillier was on with a number of uh, family physicians as well. And uh, as soon as we get more vaccines, we'll be able to start distributing all through the family physicians. And, you know, AstraZeneca uh, was, is, is one of them. And as, as you know, we, we do have a pilot project in, in the three, three regions, be it Toronto and, and Windsor and over in Kingston in uh, Doc's offices. So as soon as we get more vaccines, we'll be able to start rolling them out to the doctor's offices. But I want to give a shout out to all the, the family physicians out there that have actually went into mass vaccination centers, volunteering their time, putting needles into people's arms. And, uh, and, and there's, there's just endless stories of the great work they're doing. So really what it comes down to, more vaccines. Follow up. On a different topic, what are you hoping for from today's Supreme Court case? looking at your mid-election cuts to Toronto's council in 2018? Well, I, I can tell you, um, I haven't heard a, a, a councillor that's really disagreed with, I'm sure there was a few. I remember I was listening to the radio one day and someone who was dead against it, uh, councillor Shelley Carroll, agreed it was the right decision. I almost hit a telephone pole when I heard that one, but it's the right thing to do, very simple. Rather than sit there, and I, I know firsthand, you have double the amount of politicians and no one out there should want more politicians, I'll tell you that. Um, so we made sure that we made it feasible to get stuff passed through a lot more efficient. When I was down there, it used to, some council, council uh, meetings were four days. It's ridiculous. Four times the amount of work, four times the staff. And they're working quite fine with the 25 councillors. And, and I know uh, the mayor, <laughs> I can just tell you the mayor's doing a great job, but I think I always joke around with him. It's the best president I've ever given the mayor. He's only dealing with 25 uh, councillors, or, or yeah, I think it's 25 or 24 councillors. Imagine the job. They, they wanted to bump it up to 56. Who wants more politicians? It all lines up with the federal, provincial, municipal uh, uh, boundaries, and uh, they can, they, they're more than capable of doing the work. And uh, the, the 25 down there, I think they're doing a, a pretty good job. But I still stick to my earlier statement, Michael Ford's the best counselor down there. Next question. Yeah. From Brian Lilly at the Toronto Sun. Please go ahead. Hi, Brian. Premier, the, um, over the last several days, I've been hearing from a lot of uh, parents and advocates for youth sport and, um, uh, and recreation. And they're concerned that if the ongoing lockdowns continue, especially here in Toronto, but even the restrictions elsewhere, that in addition to losing the hockey season, figure skating, uh, basketball, that summer sports are going to be off the table. And Dr. Williams even said we may not see summer sports until the end of the summer, if at all, last week. Uh, given the, the benefits of summer sports and the provinces like British Columbia 
have never shut it down. Is it time for Ontario to, to take a different look uh, and, and say that there's evidence that this is safe and also beneficial to, to young people in terms of physical activity, mental health, and all the other benefits, and, and move forward with allowing you sports instead of keeping kids shut down inside? Yeah, you know something, Brian, good good point. Uh, I'll tell you myself, I coached uh, my girls' soccer for years and years, and it's great to get out there and get the kids out there getting exercise, uh, understanding teamwork as a, as a team. There's so many benefits to it, uh, but I'll be very frank. i got to get the, the green light from, from Dr. Williams and the local medical officers of, of health. As if there's a, a zone that are in the green and the yellow and the local medical officer wants to open it up up there, then, then God bless uh, him or her uh, to, to open it up. But uh, as we're here in Toronto and we're still in Gray and, and Peel, uh, let's just hope by that time rolls around, we're going to have more vaccines. We're going to get more people vaccinated. And I understand the kids don't get vaccinated, but if the parents are, get vaccinated, um, let's just cross our fingers because I think it's important to get team sports back up and going, get the, get the kids out there and uh, having some fun. Follow up? You keep saying that you, you've got to get the, the green light from doctors, but where does the, the leadership of a politician come in, whether it's dealing with Dr. Williams or telling someone like Dr. Devella, who quite frankly I think would keep his lockdown for months to come, mm -hmm. at what point do you as the person in charge, the elected official, say, you know what, I understand your, your position, I've heard your concerns, yep. but there's other evidence and there are needs out there that go beyond just dealing with COVID. Sure. Could I, could I go out there and be the only politician in the entire country, including the prime minister, all premiers, every single mayor, because I've talked to the vast majority of them, and, and say, okay, docs, I'm not a medical professional, but I'm going to disagree with you. When I said I'm going to follow their direction on health advice right from, right from day one. And then if I did that, they could slap a section 22 down, and it's just friction. You know, I'm, I'm going to stick with what I've done right from the beginning. I'm going to stick with health and, and science and uh, work with them collaboratively. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be very frank. There's no politician in this country is going to disagree with their chief medical officer. Uh, they just aren't going to do it. They might as well throw a rope around their neck and jump off a bridge. They're done. I'm telling you the facts. It's very simple. I respect all the medical officers and all the docs that have been working their back off. And I will always, always listen to the chief medical officer his team very very simple uh because they're they're the professionals when it comes to health care i'm not you know what my job is brian my job is once we get through this we're going to ramp up this economy uh, likes of which this province has never seen we're going to create more jobs more opportunities get people back on their feet get businesses going until they can thrive and prosper and grow and i, I just can't wait until we can uh, unleash the economy and it, and it has to happen sooner than later. But go to root cause. What do we need to make that happen? We need more vaccines. Simple as that. Last question. From Ian Campbell at CTV Northern Ontario. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Premier. Hi. I wanted to uh, get your thoughts on the post-secondary front in terms of Laurentian University. I've been speaking with some parents with the creditor protection telling me that they are thinking about sending their kids out of the north, out of the city, or sending them elsewhere because their confidence has been shaken. There have been calls, including from the Sudbury City Council for the province to increase funding. Uh, wondering where your thoughts are on the situation and at what point does the government step in to ensure the school's survival? Well, that's a great question. I'm going to hand it over to my minister. He's been uh, handling that file and doing a great job. Thank you for that question, the opportunity to respond. Uh, so as a starting point, I don't want to belabor this point, but we have to appreciate that this matter is before the courts. CCAA, Creditor Protection, is a court proceeding in the Superior Court of Justice on Ontario. There is a mandatory mediation process that is a part of this that all the parties must follow. As part of mediation, it cannot be discussed. It cannot be, uh, we cannot talk about the details of that. So we need to appreciate, number one, that this matter is before the courts. Therefore, I cannot get into the details, unfortunately. But I can uh, rest, uh, leave everyone to rest assured that we are working on this very closely. Our entire cabinet, our premier, myself, 
are working very closely. We appreciate the situation that this presents for students at Laurentian, for people uh, at all of our colleges and universities. This is a very, very difficult situation and it raises an important um, um, alarm bell, but at the same rate, what I want to make sure everybody is crystal clear on is that our sector is strong, our sector is healthy. Uh, the students at Laurentian, uh, we value those students and we will certainly ensure that those students do not lose a year of study. Uh, we can appreciate the concerns that parents and so many others have there, but I have one message to all parents and everyone associated with what is happening at Laurentian University. You have an excellent institution to continue to receive your education from. Laurentian University was the first university in Northern Ontario. It's the largest university in Northern Ontario, and our government is committed to Laurentian University. Thank you. Follow up. Thank you. And Premier, I wanted to ask um, your thoughts on what the situation currently facing Sudbury and North Bay. North Bay was immediately into the gray zone after the lockdown ended. Sudbury's now been pushed into the gray zone and the medical health officials are telling us that's largely being fueled by the variants. Where are the two regions on your radar and what, if anything, will change in terms of added or further supports from the government in the hopes of turning things around? Well, I know Vic Fidelli from, from North Bay, he's pulling in all resources to make sure that we, uh, you know, uh, crush this uh, uh, the spread up there and he's going to hold, uh, he's going to do whatever it takes. We're going to put more, uh, more vaccines up there and along with Sudbury too. A little while ago, a couple of days ago, I had a conversation uh, with, uh, actually a week ago, I had a conversation with the, uh, the mayor up there and uh, in Sudbury, he's doing a great job. I want to correct something that I said, and I apologize. Um, the AstraZeneca in the physician's uh, offices, it's in Hamilton, Toronto, Guelph, Peterborough, Simcoe, Muskoka, and Peel. Uh, it was the pharmacies I was thinking of when I, when I mentioned Kingston and Toronto and, and Windsor. But we're going to continue making sure more physicians get uh, AstraZeneca. And we'll, we'll throw everything we can at it, no matter if it's North Bay, no matter if it's Thunder Bay, or, or Sudbury. Thanks everyone. Okay, thanks everyone. And thanks again to Humber College. They're doing great.